So let's talk about the training because this is where I think people, you know, who've listened to this podcast or, you know, heard me talk about it. I'm going to become a real fan of this. Um, and I've talked about how I, I sometimes I almost don't even include it in my tally of weekly exercise. If I'm adding up the number of hours in a week that I'm exercising, it's almost an afterthought to include the ruck, even though the ruck is, is, an, is a great source of exercise. But I often talk about how I, I sort of do it as I don't know. I think it's kind of like mental health for me um, because it's the only thing I do without any other input, right? So if I'm in the weight room or on the bike, I'm either on the bike, I'm listening to a podcast. If I'm in the weight room, I'm listening to music or something like that. But this is something where I'm decidedly never carrying a phone. Um, so I'm either just alone in silence or I go, I'm doing it with, with a friend or my wife or something like that. Um, and I, I've really, really fallen in love with it. And I've yet to bring somebody on a ruck with me who hasn't kind of, if they haven't fallen in love with it, they've certainly come to appreciate why this is, this is a great thing to do. And they've gone out and bought their rucksack and things like that. But certainly I get a lot of questions. And so I, I kind of want to go through some of these with you. So I guess the first question is, do you need a rucksack, a formal, cause I have a Rucker 4.0. Yep. My wife has a Rucker 4.0. Um, we have a spare Rucker 4.0 in the garage that if you come over, we basically have three packs to rotate with tons of weights to slot in all different permutations. But somebody listening to this says, man, I don't want to spend 300 bucks on one of these things. Can I just use my backpack? It seems to me the answer is clearly yes. You're just, it's just a little more convenient to use uh, to use one of the formal packs that you guys make. Is that fair? The answer is clearly yes, you are correct. And I think, you know, look, the last thing I ever wanted to be was the Willie Loman of backpacks. I refuse to do it. <laughs> I'm just not, that's not why I was put on this earth, you know? And, and so I think that people should be more active, myself included. Let's be more active. And so Try whatever you've got. Don't wait on this this purchasing funnel about, well, I, I'm going to deliberate this because it's expensive and I'm going to wait and wait and wait and maybe someday I'll buy it and do this. Don't do that. Go find a backpack. You have one at your house. Put 10 or 20 pounds in your back or whatever you want. Put a bag of rice. I don't care. Put some water. Go walk around your neighborhood cinch it down, make it kind of as tight as you can. And I'm reluctant to tell people to put too much more weight in it because that's where it gets more uncomfortable. And once you add too much more weight to something that's not built for rucking, it just, it's uncomfortable, becomes a bad ride. And so then you're like, well, I hate rucking, right? And you can find a bunch of people that hate rucking, right? It's usually people that served in the military that, you know, carried a ton of weight, that got no sleep, that had to take fighting positions when they got there. And, you know, it's like wrapped up into this whole kind of universe. I'm talking about 20 pounds, 30 pounds for pick your mental health, physical health, social health, if you're talking to your, your wife or a friend or a, or a loved one, start there. Don't give yourself any excuses that you have to go buy something because, because you have what you need to go get started right now. My kids use their backpacks and school books. Great. So they'll come with me with, they'll, and it's just so cute to watch them load up as many books as they can put into their backpacks. That's great. Um, okay. Let's talk a little bit about some of the parameters around weight. Yep. So what guidance do you offer to, let's start with a person who is not that fit, but they're listening to this and they're like, you know what guys, I'm going to give this a try, but they're not an athlete. Yep. They're not, they're not capable of, you know, Herculean tasks at the moment. They can walk around, they could put in 10,000 steps of, you know, but, but that's about the extent to their fitness. How do you start this person out? I mean, 20 pounds, try it for a couple miles. Okay. I mean, it, it's one of those things where you, the, this is completely different from running in the, from the standpoint of if you are walking as part of your daily life, that is the same movement. You're, you're not doing this thing where there's all this different gait and, you know, new things with your Achilles or with your, the way that you land or foot strike or heel strike. It's so much simpler than that. It's just carrying a little bit of weight. And the thing is, is that your shoulders will get a little bit sore the first time. That's good. That's, that's how they get stronger. And so it, this should not be some crazy thing where you start out with, you know, a third of your body weight or more, and you want to really see what this is all about. I mean, start out simply, go for a walk and see, I mean, 
it's so great to be outside. It is so great to to kind of the sunshine and the wind and and all of that. That that's those are additional benefits. If you want to start on your treadmill, start on your treadmill. That's fine. You'll get the physiological side of it at that point. But this is so simple. I mean, you you get a little sore if you want to go a couple miles. Great, go a couple miles. Come back and try it again tomorrow. And. What kind of guidance would you provide as you escalate the weight and or if you're a person who's already kind of fit and wants to add this in? So there are some some variables here. There's the speed that you that you ruck and there's the weight that you carry. And you know, and then there's the distance. And the, and the elevation, I suppose. And, and the elevation and all of this. And so, you know, I mean, this is you have to kind of listen to yourself or what are your goals in this? I mean, if you're training up for a hike, this is a great thing to do. If you're training up for a hunt, this is a great thing to do to just baseline, right? Baseline your your fitness like that. And I mean, I just I don't think there's any reason to go out of the shoot too hard. I didn't. I mean, I started out with minimal packs and basic training and that's kind of was the I mean, 45 dry was by the time I'd done a little bit of this and you know, it's 45 on 200 pounds is still less than 25%. I mean, we're not talking and I was in really good shape otherwise. So there's no shame. Nobody cares. I mean, it's like if you come to my driveway and you work out or we go for a ruck, I don't care how much weight you carry. If you ask me how much should I carry, it's like, okay, great. Well, like, let's talk about your specific situation. If you're used to doing, you know, if you're used to carrying weights or if you're used to squatting a lot, or if you're doing the things that, that, are gonna kind of prepare you to carry weight, then great, try 30 or maybe 45 if you're really fit. If There's no shame in start out with 30, go for a couple of miles. What's the worst thing that happens? You're like, oh, I wanna make that a little harder. There's that. There's no problem there. It's just getting out is 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 kind of part of the joy without such the, the pressure about, well, what's your bench press and your deadlift? How much exactly can you do? Just simplify it, just simplify it all. What about the um, differences between a rucksack and a weight vest? So I used to use a weight vest to train for hunting trips. So I would put, you know, again, put, put it between my shoulders and go up and down hills with that. Um, but I know you've thought a lot about the ergonomics of this. So, so what, are, what are some of those differences? Yeah, and it was fun to see you and Dr. Humerman going back and forth on this a little bit. I think he had spent more time with a weight vest and, and um, that actually inspired... Michael Easter and I to go even deeper into weight vest versus versus rucksack. So an important thing is that weight vests are vital to the success of soldiers and police officers and those who are in those kinds of dangerous jobs. And so there's a component of train like you fight. If you, you need to be comfortable in a weight vest, if if your job requires you to wear a weight vest to do things like stop bullets, that's really important. What I will also tell you is that people that wear weight vests have typically terrible posture because of it. It is just kind of a compression downward that doesn't really open up. There, there, there's less, in order to breathe better, you have to kind of create this, this cavity of air in, in the front of your, your belly, which the more fatigued you get, the, the, the more that you do that when you're wearing a weight vest. And so you're kind of hunching over a little bit. It's, it's not good for what I would personally say you want your spine to look like this. If you can, you know, Dr. Sarrett would say, if you can, you have to own your breath to own a pose. Well, rucking is no different. If you can own your breath, it means your shoulders are back and you can take a really deep breath while you're rucking. And, and so the, the, the weight vest is also, you know, it looks a little different than a rucksack. You can't quite blend in quite as well. This is getting into the aesthetics less than the, the physiological response. But the rucksack is more comfortable. And, and I say that from not the standpoint of I'm trying to, to live more easily. <laughs> I say that from the standpoint of I can put my shoulders back. It's posture corrective for me. So it rolls my shoulders back when I cinch it down tight, which for me works well to maintain solid posture that is the opposite of, say, uh, lower back or neck curvature forward, which is more likely when you don't have that on your, on your back. Now, one of the things that I remember from when we went out for a ruck, uh, last year 
was that you didn't use the chest strap, which comes on the rucksack, and you weren't using the hip belt, which is an attachment you can buy for 20 bucks or something. Um, I've played with both of these. I also do prefer not to use the chest strap. I find it actually makes it harder to breathe. It does. And so I actually prefer to have it wide open, which means there's a little more pressure on my shoulders, but that's a worthwhile trade-off because I have unrestricted breathing. But I do quite fancy the belt. Um, and I just recall you weren't using either. Is that just a throwback to your days of the use case you referred to earlier, which is like in the military, I wasn't going to wear a belt because it would get in the way of me grabbing a magazine. So I did grow up like that with my rucking where we just didn't use hip belts. And, you know, I mean, for a hip belt, to f there's a butt coming. And, and the butt is for, you know, the fit for me when you start to transfer the load around your, your hips it, it kind of reduces some of the stability that I have with the weight and the way that my shoulders go back mm. and the way that I breathe. Now, when you get into very heavy loads, hunting style elk loads or, you know, heavy military ammunition loads or something. I mean, I found that there's a lot of value in just alternating how you're doing it because you want the blood flow to go certain ways. And there's, even when it's a shoulder only carry, there's little tips and tricks to kind of just flex your shoulders around just a little bit so that you can get the blood flow to go there even a little bit more. Um, but I just, it's just not a comfortable thing for me. And so I don't, I don't use it. And what you find is that for the load to actually transfer it can be at odds with how much you cinch the rucksack down. Yeah. You can't cinch it down much on the shoulders if you want it to be cinched tight on the hips is what I found at least. Right. So then for that to be a both thing, that's why these hunting packs are enormous and they're really long and they're built to carry really heavy loads that you can do either with. For me, it's just not quite as practical. And I am I prefer the feeling of the shoulder carry. I mean, they taught us high and, high and tight on your back is where you want the weight. And stable always. So whether you use our stuff or whatever you're using, you want it to be stable. The more that stuff is shifting around inside of your ruck, that's where you're going to, you, you have the opportunity to, okay, you step on uneven ground and then you, you, you go a little bit too far this way. And then you tweak your, your back in the wrong spot or your, your, whatever it might be. You don't want that when stable is, is exactly how you want it. And so I really like that feeling of stability high and tight on my, on my back, just right up on my shoulders. So would you just sort of suggest that folks muck around with this and figure out what feels best to them? Yes, absolutely. And, and, you know, I think that the idea of the resistance side of rucking, starting with your shoulders and going all the way down to your feet, I mean, to me, it's, it's, you're, you're, you're starting that resistance with your upper body. And when you transfer all the load to your hips, you're starting it much lower on the body. And so it's, it's different strokes for different folks, just as my grandmother used to say, and people like it certain ways, depending upon how the, the fit is and, you know, but I, there's no, especially at lighter loads, you know, people who are say used to carrying book bags or they're used to doing these types of things. I mean, you're used to carrying that on your shoulders. You've already prepared yourself. This is not some, you're, you're, you're walking in your part of your daily life. You're training for this. You're, you're ready. And so there's this, this idea of kind of just ride that through. And as you get more weight, say you start to get up to 45 or you, you start to maybe max out at a third of your body weight, then you can kind of, you'll, it, it puts more pressure on your system, your technique, and you might want to transfer the load or you might want to do it a little bit differently. I mean, if I do really long, really heavy rucks, I will occasionally use the sternum strap in the front because it's going to take some of the load off my shoulders, which allows the blood flow to come back to my shoulders and my hands. And that then lets, you know, it just gives me that little break. And then I, I, I just kind of continue with the mission. <laughs>